A sadomasochistic gangster goes up against an equally psychotic vigilante in what we did not expect to be the most disturbing fucking movie we may have ever seen. Our connector to Audition. This is 2001's Ichi the Killer, directed by Takashi Miike. I'm Connor Izagari. And I'm Austin Johnson. And welcome to a very fucked up edition of Filmgasm. Ichi the Killer, maybe the most cult movie we've ever done, or maybe ever will do. This movie has a rep, a rep I was not aware of. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, me neither. And now that we know, sweet Jesus, I don't even know where to begin with this thing. This was a monster. I mean, you heard in our audition episode that this bled through almost the entire time, because we had a lot to unpack with this. No kidding. (laughs) My God. Uh, Ichi the Killer. There's like a huge smile on my face. I don't know why. Because this movie is completely fucked up. Very, very, very dark. Yeah. Imagery that I've never seen in my life. Nor do, like you said, do I think we'll ever do a movie like this again. (laughs) No. Uh, Definition of a cult classic, like you said. Yeah. The reputation it has is so strong that the people who haven't seen it are like, you know, like, no. (laughs) <laughs> and we didn't because this is our, you know, um, so like we, we said on our, our episode on Wednesday, talking about Audition, we, we have both seen now Audition, Itchy the Killer, and 13 Assassins. Yes. Itchy the Killer is my favorite. Yeah, probably three. mine too. Um, but geez. 13 Assassins is awesome. And then Audition is my third favorite. That's not to say that I don't like it. It's, uh, they're all three really cool and different. Yeah. But Itchy the Killer is... It's unlike anything I've ever seen. It's two hours of, yeah, of like... Grizzly shit. <laughs> nasty. Like, gross. Sexual. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, 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 like you said, it's hard to know where to start with this one. Well, like we said, like I said in the intro, a big theme of this movie is sadomasochism. Yes. Finding yes. pleasure in pain. And that already is very twisted and hard to relate to. But when you combine that with a just pure gangster thrill turns into something ugly, something I, I'd never seen or even heard of. And I, I was not prepared. I was not prepared for this. No, neither was I. Neither was I. And uh, I actually started this movie during the day at like 11 a.m. And I had to stop like 30 minutes in. And I was like, fuck, I didn't, I didn't know this was going to be this this twisted. Yeah. So I had no problem stopping it and going to work and coming back and finishing it that night. But since it was so twisted, I went to work and I was like, I cannot stop thinking about this movie because I, where I had left it, I was like, oh my God, you know, this guy's about to cut off his tongue. You know? uh-huh. And that's where I left it. And I was like, man, I, just, I can't stop thinking about this movie. It's so dark, but I love it so much. I love the beginning of the film, the music, the way, the, st- the style of directing. It's Mike's it's for, for me as you know, I've only seen three, but it's his masterpiece. And from what I've read, a lot of like top 10 lists, they have this one at number one because it, it encapsulates all of Mike's wonderful characteristics as a director, the style, the darkness of it, the going, like going the extra mile to make you really feel the pain. Yeah. You got to respect that, man. Yeah. You're was, in there with this movie. This movie feels like you're on fucking meth. Yeah. The entire no time. No kidding. No kidding. You're no just way. thrust right into the action at the beginning. You're never told what's going on. No, and the cinematography is on yeah. a different level. You got to piece this together as you go along and you yeah. realize we are in a movie filled with the most fucked up people in cinema history. There is no hero in this movie. Everyone's a monster. Yeah. On a completely different level. I mean, the closest thing to our hero is a rape obsessed vigilante who jerks off to, to pain. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> I don't even, like, you gotta laugh because it's so fucking absurd. It is. You, it's you couldn't character. pitch this to any American producer. No, no, and this, you know, this the, the source material is, you know, manga comic, and it's hard to believe that this was, like, written, you know? Yeah. <laughs> for, for, for a comic. Somebody wrote this down and was like, oh, that's good, that's good, that's yeah, good. Let's, let's keep going keep, here. Let's keep going, oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. cuts off his tongue. Oh, okay, <laughs> rips the guy's face off. Oh, maybe he jerks uh, yeah. off on the corpse. Ah, oh, that perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fuck. Mm, let's use real, let's, let's, re, let's use uh, real semen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll, oh, yeah, that'll work. Uh, 
Well, what do you want to do here? <laughs> you want to talk about the cast a little bit? Let's talk about the, about the cast. All, all right. right. So, so um, our, yeah, like you said, our two main characters, Ichi and Kakira. Ichi is played by Noah Omari. Um, he's obviously someone we don't know very well, but he's in a he's in a prequel that came out just a few years after this movie. <laughs> I'm going to try to find that and watch it someday. Let me know when you find it. Yeah, I, I will. And then, you'll be the first, you'll be the only person I tell. <laughs> Kakihara is played by Tadanobu Asano, who Marvel fans will recognize as Hogan, Boom. Thor's friend in the first three Thor movies. Hell yeah. So, I didn't just, wow. So cool. <laughs> so cool. I love that. And he is unforgettable. Oh my God. Like, so I would go as far as saying, like, this guy should have been up for like an Oscar. <laughs> Obviously, it's not going to happen. No. I mean, 2001. Well, Denzel Washington won Best Supporting Actor that year. I mean, 1971, A Clockwork Orange was up for Best Picture. True, so, true. Disturbing shit has snuck through the cracks, but not quite like this. Not Japanese, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's how strongly I feel about Kakira. Uh, that character is incredible. Uh, I also think Palin Sun, who plays Karen, who's a Chinese prostitute in the in the movie, she's incredible. Did you also like think you were having a stroke when she spoke English? Yeah. Because I was like, I can't be here. Is that English? She's like breaking it up, yeah. yeah. She was a fascinating character. <laughs> uh, you got Susumu Terajima playing Suzuki. <laughs> Suzuki. That poor S- motherfucker. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> Sorry about that. We'll, oh. we'll, we'll get to your demise. Jesus. Uh, you got Shun Sugata playing Takiyama, who is uh, Kakira's, one of his henchmen, one of his boys, who does not stomach this stuff very well. Ooh. He always goes outside to smoke a cigarette whenever torturing is being done because it's just not really his thing. But that's a part of this movie too is the gang, the Anyo gang, and the commitment they have until a certain moment. <laughs> the commitment they have to this gang and the commitment that uh, Takayama has to Kakiyara is really incredible. And it's like something out of Goodfellas, or like a Scorsese film, that, that dedication, the blind commitment to... Yakuza. S- yeah, that's how. Just, this is what we do. Brotherhood. This is what we do. Once you're in, you don't get out. Yeah, and that leads us to um, a, a guy who I think leaves a great performance in this movie as well, and that'd be Sabu, who plays Kaneko. Um, Kaneko is also a a henchman of Kakiras, and he's also kind of a loser because we learn that he was a cop and lost his gun. Uh, has a v- very interesting backstory as we get into this movie, and we'll talk about him a lot. I thought he was incredible, and the last person I want to bring up would be Shinya. Uh, Sukamoto, who, that's who plays Gigi, <laughs> who has quite possibly the most fascinating storyline I've ever seen in any movie <laughs> for a character. And when he takes off his clothes. What was that? Oh my God. Whoa. I mean, that's like in the last five minutes of the movie. We'll get there, but whoa. That reminded me a lot of Kung Fu Hustle. <laughs> I didn't know how to react when that came on the screen. <laughs> that's why MDB has it listed as comedy. <laughs> Cause it's just yeah, fuck that. By the way, this is using as hell. No comedy. No, no, this is. I I was very close to labeling this as horror on the website when I did my review. Yeah, but it's action crime. I guess I gotta. You know, it's not up to me. Yeah, man. I you know, uh, Ichi the Killer. Uh, there's you know we could go on and on about how fucked it is. Uh, and at the Toronto Film Festival in 2001, where it premiered. Oh boy. In North America, whoo, lots of walk, <laughs> lots. <laughs> Lots of walkouts, lots of misunderstanding, uh, lots of people leaving before they even knew what was going on. You know what I love to think? That person, when we, re- when we did audition, we read about that person who passed out at the film festival in audition. I want to think that they went to see this, too. <laughs> and it happened again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just faster. They just passed out after five minutes rather than Shit. an hour and a half. Yeah, no, it's it's like rocked people's world you know everybody who watches it is immediately um i i I think something that was like really interesting like a credit to the movie is uh our our boy josh said it's something else (laughs) and for josh to say that we knew yeah man this is why you watched it before i did and i I told you i was getting ready to watch it and you told me to buckle up i told i said buckle the fuck up and i'm like oh shit (laughs) and you said i got goosebumps i'm like yeah Yeah. i wanted to spill to you like dude this is the most fucked movie ever I was like, just let him watch it. I'm gl- yeah, I'm glad you did that. It's two hours. And, yeah. I, and then I watched it again. I watched it twice. This movie, <sighs> this movie blew me away, man. Blew me away. And I, I'm willing to, I'm willing to, I'm willing to go there. This is, this is what we do in the podcast. We're really honest. We're really vulnerable about the process of watching these movies and like why we watch them. I love this movie. I love this movie. I'm, yeah. I'm going to give it a 10 by the end of this podcast. Fuck. I 
Wow. I want to put that out there now. Wow. Because I don't want to be talking about it so highly and people think. I want that to be out there now. I love this movie. I thought it, I thought it like changed the game for me as a movie, movie fan. That's fucking awesome. Man. I am now like so interested in Japanese film. Uh, it, it, took, it took the host and Parasite and all Bong Joon-ho's masterpieces to get into Korean film. If this is what it takes to get into Japanese film, so be it. <laughs> I have never, obviously never seen anything like that. We can keep saying that's a broken record, but it's true. It's literally true, and it's not just the movie. It's like every two minutes I'm seeing something new. Yeah. I'm seeing a new way of filmmaking. I'm seeing a new way of, of filming something. The cinematography in this movie is absurd. Absurd. Like towards the beginning of the movie when you're, you're, the camera's kind of like at these guys' legs and they're going upstairs. It's when they're cleaning. Unbelievable. Like unbelievable stuff that I think gets overlooked because of how dark the movie is. That's what I'm, that's what I'm a sucker for is the, the, the craft of the film first. How does it look? How does it feel? What's the atmosphere? That's why I like the guys I do. David Fincher. Yeah. You know, Tarantino. Guys who have a very distinct style and they know exactly how they want their story to come across. I have now found a guy that I didn't really, I hadn't dug into and I found somebody and that's really rare at age 25 now because I've watched so many movies. It's rare to find someone new (laughs) and I just found a new director that I'm like, oh man, like I'm all in and it's because of this one. Audition was cool. Really liked it but this is the one that, okay, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> uh, my my like antenna is wolf through the roof you know yeah man fuck this movie's incredible i i'm really excited to get into it um yeah what what because we both we both were kind of hesitant going to audition but not this yeah why why is that because i think audi- why does it have that thing on the internet where it's like audition yeah i don't i think because audition is more of a sudden attack on mm-hmm. you it's built up to be this romantic comedy almost, and then it sneaks up on you. Itchy is fucked up from the beginning. Yeah. And oh, I, yeah. Audition, you know, like I said, it was on that scary movie countdown. So for me personally, I'd heard about Audition my whole life. Yeah. I'd heard Itchy the Killer in passing. My dad's a big fan of the movie. He had it on DVD. So I, I knew about it, but I didn't know what it was. Audition, I was very clear on what that was, and it scared me. But Itchy... <laughs> Well, it's it's the superior, fucked up. It's never freak, leave, it's freak fest. Never leaving my mind. No way, man. <laughs> and I wonder if they're ever going to attempt like an American remake of this. That would never work. No, you you simply cannot re conjure up the glory of Kakira. Like you can't. You can't. You cannot do that. No. It's impossible. He, like that. That's like like I'm I, like for people who are listening. If you haven't seen these movies, like. I'm not kidding, man. Like, this guy, this role of Kakira is, like, legendary. He is fucking frightening. And he feeds off of it. Like, needs he, like, needs it to live. The pain and giving pain. Like, he needs that so bad. And he finds his match, you know? Or does he? Yeah, it's just so epic. And then, and then there's, like, stuff I can totally see, like, when the Anyo gang is walking, I can see, like, Reservoir Dogs, man. You know, I'm like, <laughs> man, like, this is a fucking gangster movie. At heart, it's a gangster movie. It's ultimately about, like, Gigi fucking with these gangs and trying to get them to pit against each other. Yeah. Crazy. <laughs> really genius. And then within, of course, yeah, it's just some of the most fucked up imagery ever. So, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. True. Without further ado, do you want to get into the plot? or what? what? Uh, let's talk a bit about the uh, reception this film got. Y- yeah, I mean, yeah, that's, of course. <laughs> uh, so, it's got an IMDb score of 7.0. Uh-huh. Rotten Tomatoes score sixty five percent, but an audience score of eighty two percent. Yeah. So people who have seen this love it. <laughs> In fact, here, here's the critics' consensus on IMDb on uh, Rotten Tomatoes: Ichi the Killer is a thoroughly shocking gore fest that will surely entertain those with strong stomachs and a penchant for brutal violence. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. If you can't stomach this kind of stuff, you better stay away from this because this is gonna oh, fuck yeah. you up. Yeah, no, it's not for everybody, of course. I don't, no. I definitely don't want to give off that energy like because I am praising it. That's part of the reason I came out and said that I love it so much. Yeah. I don't I I'm not saying like everybody needs to see this movie. That's not the case. No. This is for certain fans. Yeah. This is for a very niche crowd. Yeah. But that niche crowd loves this movie. Yeah. Cuz I mean, there's a certain group of horror fan who loves the gore. And I get that. Gore hounds are awesome. I know a lot of gore hounds. And this movie will satisfy those guys for sure. 
But if you're just the kind of guy who likes, you know, to occasionally be spooked by a horror movie, stay the fuck away from this. <laughs> this is too much for you. Yeah, yeah. If you just like kind of, you know, yeah, like being scared yeah. a little bit, be on the edge mm-hmm. of your seat. Yeah, this is not it. No. You can't go. This is like eyes peeled back, like, yeah. like you said, on meth, like nasty shit. <laughs> you can't go from drinking light beer to doing eight balls in the back room. You can't, you can't make that jump that fast. Yeah. You gotta grad, you know, you gotta graduate. Unless you're like Charlie Sheen, yeah. <laughs> you don't have Tiger's blood. You can't do this. So, <laughs> yeah. winning. Remember that whole thing? What the fuck was that? I know, man. <laughs> I know. So, yeah, let's dig into this mofo. All right. So, uh, <laughs> in a flashback, <laughs> Itchy is masturbating on an apartment balcony while watching a pimp assault a prostitute. That's our first scene. <laughs> and it is a violent rape. And <laughs> Ichi's just watching from oh, the patio. Oh, oh. Yeah. Those kind of noises. Oh, mm. oh. And you, yeah, you see actual semen. A lot of it. Like, it looks like a fucking gallon. It's really crazy and really disgusting and creepy. And sets the tone of like, are, are you in or are you out? Because <laughs> if you're out, get the fuck out. You know? <laughs> Fuck, man. But me, I was like, uh, yeah, I think I'm in. <laughs> God damn it. Why am I in? Why? It you know? tests the waters, man. For sure. For sure. Oh my that's, God. That's, that's, that's the, that's the goal. Ugh. And then immediately, you know, off camera, sadistic Yakuza boss, Anyo, is brutally murdered. Yeah. An expert cleaning crew run by Gigi, who I mentioned earlier, uh, immediately remo- removes any trace of Anyo's remains and credits Ichi for the kill. <laughs> Later, Kakira, Anyo's, you know, lead enforcer. Yeah. And other crime lords visit the spotless apartment, concluding that Anyo fled town with a prostitute and three million yen. That's, you know, the gang's money. It's on, you know. But why? I love that. It doesn't really make any sense. I mean, he's the boss. Why would the boss take off? With, a, with their money, yeah. yeah. I don't know. But it took me, it, the movie does not spell this out for you. You really have to f- pay attention to figure this out. And it honestly probably takes a couple viewings to really become clear on this. I was not clear on this. Admittedly. On this this bit? On this bit. It took me a while to be like, all right, so they're cleaning. That's a cleaning crew. And I, I thought it was out of it sequence. It moves fucking quick. It moves really quick. Like I said, and this, again, the cinematography kind of puts you in like, you know, that weird druggy trance. Like, yeah. I don't know what's going on. Yeah. Lots of editing. Lots of. It's like bah, the bah, movie bah. saying, you know, fuck you. You figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just kind of like, oh, this is life, you know, either jump in or jump out. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Life does not stop and start at your convenience, you miserable piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, obviously, Kakira and all of his boys are like, what the fuck's going on? Uh, so, they visit under underground uh, nightclub with other gang members. He tells Anyo's girlfriend, who I mentioned earlier, that's Karen. She's a Chinese prostitute, speaks a little bit of English. Uh, you know, and he's like, you know, Anyo must be alive, you know, or he was kidna- kidnapped by a rival gang. That must be it, right? And he's asking her, and you know, she, n- nothing really happens to that conversation. Kind of like he knows, but she knows, and they, it's just like, all right, we're no one's gonna really say anything here. You it's know? all speculation, really. Exactly. And then Kakira sees Gigi, <laughs> and his boys, and they're like, he's like, man, they're in town. What are they doing in town? I'm like, what the hell? And so you know, goes up to them, and he's like, hey, if you hear anything about. On you, you know, let me know. And kind of looks at him like, I know. <laughs> and you know, as the viewer, you're like, I don't know, this guy's scary. Yeah. Ka- Kakeiro's, the first time you see his face, smoke is bellowing out of gills in the side of his yeah. face. He's got a Glasgow smile going on, which yeah. if you don't know what that is, he's had his cheeks slit open at the lips to basically make his mouth. Yeah, you think Joker's scary? Yeah. Check again. <laughs> think again. Yeah. Heath you know? Ledger's Joker, the look, very much based on this guy. Yes. And it's... um. It's creepy. It's creepy as hell. Very creepy. It's intimidating. Extremely. I mean, yeah, when he's, sm- I'm a smoker yeah. and you like catch yourself sometimes like you'll maybe be smoking and you'll like be talking to somebody and like sometimes your mouth will be closed and like go out of your nose or something. Uh, but this, no, this was like the coolest way I've seen a cigarette smoked in my entire life in a movie. And I'm big on that. I'm a big Wes Anderson fan. I'm a sucker for that stuff. Like I think smoking looks really good on camera. Someone smoking a cigarette. And that, like, is such a cool tone setter of, like, this guy's just badass. Like, re- you know, regard- like, regardless of, like, I don't know what he's about. I don't know what he's about. You know, this is the beginning of the film. 
That guy's badass. He's got these scars on his face, coming down his eyes, across his cheeks, and then coming down his, you know, his lips. And he's got the two piercings. He's got the piercing in his tongue. Yeah. And then, yeah, the, the piercings that are holding his mouth open. Yeah. Like they're holding it up. Because later on we see it removed and it's just, blah, it's vicious. Oh, it looks like a fucking angler fish. Oh, oh, man. And you know he did that shit to himself. <laughs> yeah. Because he, wanted, could, yeah, he wanted to look threatening and he wanted it to hurt and it, he loved it to hurt. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so, Gigi tries to get a step ahead of the game here. Yeah. And sets a whole snowball effect, you know. Um, <laughs> he, he tells Kakira, he's like, all right, I'll go to him first. Rather than him find out the hard way, I'll just go, I'll go tell him something that's not true. <laughs> Stupid. He suggests that Suzuki, a member of the rival Funaki gang, F- Funaki, F- I think it's Funaki, Funaki, because F U N A K I, Funaki, yeah, Funaki, yeah. has kidnapped Anya. Kakira captures Suzuki and tortures him. Needless to say, uh, with suspension, with suspension, and uh, if you've seen Midsommar, it's in that movie where there's, uh, you know, meat hooks. Yeah, like yeah, like fish meat hooks in the skin, holding you up by the ceiling. And then he's pouring hot water on his back. Yeah, and piercing him. Uh, yeah, burning like, you know, boiling oil. And this, he has zero proof that this guy actually knows anything. And he doesn't know anything. No. Doesn't know shit. Gigi's fucking with him. But he goes to such ex- insane lengths on hearsay. <laughs> it's yeah. ridiculous. And this is, again, like the first 10 minutes of the movie. So you're just like, yeah. fuck, this guy means business. <laughs> I lost it when he poured the tempura oil. I was like, the second he picked it up, I'm like, fuck. And of course, of course, the camera doesn't allow you to like even look anywhere but the back. You know, mm. it's like so focused on his back. Ugh. The camera just is such an aid in this movie. Um, always choosing the darkest perspective rather than like, let's go away when the thing is being sliced. Let's go right at it. Let's, yeah. Let's film it. Let's like, fucking film it. You fucking know why you're here. So watch this. Yeah, yeah. Check this shit out. See if you can stomach that. So Suzuki is innocent. Yeah. And everybody finds that out. Kakira is like, it's not a big deal, man. You, shouldn't he be able to handle some pain? And he's like, fine, man. Fine. Fuck it. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll give you something in return, you know, as penance. So he, Funaki shows up, though, and is like, what is the fucking yeah. meaning of this? Like, Dude, <laughs> what you, are you doing? Really? Like, <laughs> And Funaki, once again, it's Bostonaka from Kill Bill. Yes. <laughs> Hell yeah. yeah. I was going to let you get that one. Yeah, I didn't mention him in the... It's just incredible, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, these connections, you know, in movies. It's just so cool. And Takihara is like, I don't know, thought it was a guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He sorry. told me, and the points, and Gigi's fucking gone. <laughs> Love that bit. Yeah, Gigi's just missing, and you're like, yeah. He escaped in the confusion. This, and the movie sets off. Like, just completely <laughs> sets off after that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Kakira slices his own tongue, part of his tongue off, in a brutal scene, when you find out that his tongue is like black, it's like black and purple. So you're like, it's probably been burnt a few times mm. by himself. And then he has a you know tongue piercing on the end of his tongue. So he pulls the. God damn <laughs> this is why we threw a disclaimer out at the beginning of audition. Just you talking about it is fucking me up over here. He pulls his <laughs> he pulls the ring at the tip of his tongue and holds it and be, you know and holds it for the camera like hey check it out and then grabs a a sword. <laughs> A sword, not a knife, like I like not you know like a Kill Bill sword, <laughs> and it starts to cut off like a fourth of his tongue. I thought it was like half. Like he goes it's, at that it's, thing. It does say half, and then it, you know I thought when it was in that water, I was like that doesn't look like half, but I don't know. Either way, <laughs> and it gets fucking like stapled back shut, and he's got little wires and stitches in it, and it's the scariest tongue I've ever seen, by far. Well, even when he's like saying you know. It'll grow back. Yeah, he's like, like the human body regenerates. Yeah, it's fine. Who the hell is that nonchalant? Your mouth hasn't regenerated, bro. Yeah, you fuck man. You still got gills in the side of your face. And I'm, I don't know if that's accurate. No, you cut off half your tongue. I don't know if that's growing back. I think it does, as we learned in parts of the Caribbean when that one guy ah cotton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, he can't. Hell, he can't talk. <laughs> but oh my god, Jesus Christ! And this is all in the first twenty minutes. Of the movie. Oh, yeah, we're not even, we, haven't even, we haven't even licked yet. Jesus the, the Christ. Stuff, the good stuff. But Funaki's like, you know, we want penance. We want your your video, your uh, pornography ring. And he's like, look, 
Anjo took off with all our money. We lose that. We lose everything. And Funaki's like, not my fucking problem. You tortured my best man. Like, what do you, we want retribution. And I don't think Funaki even says like, okay, I'll accept the tongue. <laughs> Hagihara just does it. Yeah. He's like, this is, <laughs> this is what's right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I wouldn't want to argue with the guy who just sliced off half his tongue. And like handed it to me. Yeah. That's fucking commitment. <laughs> You're like, yeah, man. Uh, Ugh. So, yeah, that settles the matter, but not for Suzuki. <laughs> you don't just forgive somebody who did that shit to you. No, no. Oh, man. So you remember uh, Gigi, of course. This is the guy who was cleaning with the cleaning crew, and there's there's another guy in the cleaning crew named Kano. Yeah. Kano is a heroin addict, and we see that right away, which is an interesting choice for the character, you know? Uh, right away when they're in the van before they do the first clean, he's like, I want to hit, I want to hit, and they're like, no, man, like, we got business to do, you know? Yeah. So there's not a lot of character background, but you know this guy's, you know, a junkie. Yeah. Takira, of course, is going to use that to his advantage. <laughs> so him and some gang members raid a hotel room and capture him. Uh, you know, and <laughs> I love that. that K- Kano had plastic surgery <laughs> from the first time that Kakira met him. <laughs> and they didn't quite recognize him. <laughs> and he, like, admits who he is. He's like, my brother, just kill me, man. I know your reputation. Just kill me, man. <laughs> he's not, he's like, what? Well, just please, just get rid of me. I, I. I know your methods. I, I had to get plastic surgery. Please just kill me, man. And that, that, is, that is really scary in itself. The fear that this guy has instilled in this entire city is like, oh my God. But Kakihara is not going to just, no. It's all about the pain for him. He is yeah. never, nobody's just going to die. They, oh, no. they have to suffer first. Suffer. And, he, and then he, he's ultimately finding his, his own suffering is what he's yeah. wanting to find. It's crazy. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so now, you know, Kano is... Captured, obviously. <clears throat> well, they just find him in the fucking TV. Yeah. <laughs> out of his mind. Uh, you know, and he reveals that he helped clean up the murder scene, but he's like, look, Itchy is the guy. He's the guy who can kill, and that's the guy you want, and he's targeting you. And he points at Kakira. <laughs> and Kakira's like, good. Yeah. And that's when the movie, you're like, oh, shit. Like, he really <laughs> wants this. It's on. He Like, we, like ultimately, like, they, they want a showdown. He wants a yep. showdown. He wants a one-on-one fight. He wants to feel the pain that he's been searching for. He wants a real-life Street Fighter. Like, yeah. Like, one-on-one with Itchy. He wants it really bad. He's seen what he can do. Oh, boy. And he does more. So, he's targeted. And we return to the opening flashback where Itchy is stepping in from the balcony to kill the pimp at the beginning who is brutalizing that prostitute. Yeah. Her name is Sailor. Ugh. Uh, whom... Itchy patronizes earlier in the film, as we saw at that really weird scene in the um, that brothel. Yeah, brutal scene. That's not here in the plot synopsis because I don't know how you like write about it. It's a really fucked up scene. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that's one. I guess you know you're just gonna have to watch it to <laughs> to see it. Uh, afterwards, he tells her that he will be the one beating her up now because he simply I, I don't know how else to say he he shreds Anya to in half. Yeah. He, 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 he does a, he does like Anya is like antagonizing him. Like, why are you in my apartment? What are you doing? Who are you? And you know, this woman's like destroyed on the ground and he like has a boner. Yeah. And I think at that time I was like, mm, man, I feel weird. Like as a viewer, <laughs> as a viewer yeah. I was like, I was like, where is this going? This you could know? go anywhere because I was like, I didn't think we were going to go back to this flashback. I didn't know if we were going to see this kill and we do. And it is frightening. He's got blades in his boots that we find out. Yeah. And he fucking, they come out of his boots and he does, uh, what's that called? He does like a side winding kick from up above and slices him from the skull down all the way to his crotch. He bisects the motherfucker. Yeah. And it's pretty, the CGI there is pretty fucking goofy, but it's awesome though. The message is received. (laughs) No kidding. Yeah. Yeah. Just split body. Yeah. And and he's, I love it. I love how he says, uh, Anya's like, what the fuck is happening? Before he splits and... <laughs> oh my gosh. Mm. Oh, I don't know if those would be my last words. I... <laughs> oh man. That, that scene is, is crazy. Because that's when you see Itchy. Oh, that's what he does. Yeah. That's how all that blood got there. That's how he brutalized these people. Is with that, those blades in his boots. That's his weapon? <laughs> and then let's talk about his suit. Okay. What would you think about his suit? His like Nerf style... <laughs> fucking suit well at first i was like this goofy dude's gonna get himself killed 
trying to save this girl. But then I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> the blades in the the blades in the foot and like the, the high kick. I was like, what 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 is this guy? <laughs> is he like is he a vigilante? Is he a serial killer? Is he here just for her? And then you know, you put it together and you're like, oh, okay, this is his lot in life. Yeah. He kills people he deems bullies. But he looks ridiculous. He looks absurd. And that's why Anyo is like antagonizing him. He's like, what are you, what are you doing? Kick-ass has a better costume than he does. Yes, yes. <laughs> oh, man. After he slices Anyo, Sailor, the prostitute, is obviously a little confused. I would say, yeah. Uh, at this yeah weird figure who has this... It's been strange. a rough night. And, and, then, and then she realizes, mm, this guy's a little unhinged, you know, and he's got like a boner. Uh, and he starts approaching her and he's saying, to me, this is more, yeah, maybe the tough, one of the, probably the toughest scene to swallow as far as dialogue. Um, he's telling her, don't worry, I'm going to beat you up now. Fuck. Jesus Christ. (laughs) And she is at first like playing along with it. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That'll be good. I love this. You know, she thanks him. And then she grabs a baseball bat and then she has no decision but to retaliate. Yep. Uh, as he is clearly mentally not there, totally. No. Um, and he, uh, yeah, he kills her too. <laughs> yep, slices her throat open. Uh, just on the side too, mm-hmm. which causes it to, for her to die a little slower. And that, 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 that CGI, a little bit better. Because you got just, yeah. or is it even CGI? No, that's, that's, that's just straight spewing. Yeah, that's squibs. The, the cut looks good. Good cut. The cut looks real good. Yeah. And then when she is like, Going at it, you know, so he starts like walking towards him. It's like, oh man, this is, yeah. Whew. Well, there you realize Itchy's no hero. Oh no, he's he's fucked up. Yeah, he's really fucked up. Like yeah. me- like m- like mentally disabled. Yeah. Um, and, and obviously has a strange problem with how he gets aroused. Yeah, he f- he finds pleasure in pain, just like Kagehiri, and it's that's a terrible way to live. <laughs> I mean, to have that mentality. I mean, Jesus Christ. Ugh, it's just crazy. It's a, you know, it's a trait a lot of uh, real life serial killers have had. I know Ted Bundy mm-hmm. had the same deal. Dahmer. It's just, fi- you know, getting aroused by hurting people. It's, it's grisly. It's, yeah, it's like the worst m- motive to have, you know? Oh, it's man. Like the worst. Yeah, man. So Oof. messed up. Uh, so after that bruta- brutal scene, you know, so that's, that's the flashback. So that's at the beginning of the film. He kills Anyo and the prostitute. That's when Gigi, Kano, and their other boy go and clean it up. Yeah. So we're all kind of caught up with the story now. And things start making sense because you're like, okay, nobody's good. Everybody's a piece of shit. Nobody has good intentions. All right, let's just see what happens. And <laughs> the movie becomes more entertaining because of that. Because you drop all, you drop all reasoning and you're like, yeah. I'm just going to watch. There's right? no tropes in this movie. No, I'm just watching for entertainment now. Yeah. And I just want to kind of see, what, see where this goes. At Suzuki's prompting... Kakira is kicked out of the syndicate. <laughs> he is covered head to toe in bandages. Yeah. And he's just like, I want him the fuck out. Yeah. <laughs> but, love, yeah. But, you know, he, he, so he walks out like it's nothing. Kakira's yeah. like, all right. Thank you. And he walks back in. He's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to take over the syndicate now. <laughs> See ya. And then, <laughs> and then the entire Anyo gang goes with him. Yeah. They're like, yeah, I don't want to cross that guy. <laughs> no. And when someone does, Kakira says, now is the time to speak up if you want to speak up. And one guy does and says, oh, like, Kakira, you know, thank you, but I think I want to just go home or whatever. And he's like, is that so? <laughs> and then he stabs him in the foot and he yeah. has to walk with that thing in his foot. With his needles. Yeah. <laughs> he has to walk in the street with that. And now we have like an epic needle drop and then walking in the streets of Japan. Just <laughs> the scariest motherfuckers on the planet. <laughs> led, by, led by the most evil man that I've seen in a movie. Incredible stuff. Suzuki then promises Gigi, this it gets really interesting here, a million yen to squash Kakira. <laughs> Gigi, it is revealed, is secretly orchestrating events in order to pit Yakuzuka clans against one another. Then things start making a lot more sense with the help of Iji. Yeah. And he's the one who's putting these things in his mind about bullies. And about, he's lying to him about, oh. Yeah. And, and Ichi's like, were these the guys who bullied me when I was a kid? He's like, no, but they're much worse. They're, they're bullies. They're just like them. It's memento. Straight up. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> <Hell> yeah. <sighs> Crazy stuff. <laughs> Messed up. 
brilliant though. If you can somehow manage to corral your own secret weapon against the Yakuza. Yeah. And manipulate events like this, props. Incredible. Yeah. Oof. Oh man. Uh, th- though a normally unassuming and cowardly young man, Ichi becomes homicidal and sexually aroused when he's enraged. <laughs> Gigi is able to manipulate Ichi's weak personality by impairing several false, mm-hmm. imp- implanting several false memories. A high school rape in particular, oh, which we see, Jesus. we see footage of, which is very dark. Yeah. And uses the unstable Ichi as an assassin. Yeah. So the memory is Ichi stood by as a classmate was raped by several men. And he got an erection while watching the rape. And he just built his identity from there. Yeah. Ugh. Jesus. Craziness. And he regrets not helping her, but at the same time, he relishes that memory. It's very strange. Ugh. Very twisted. Yeah, and then... This is a weird scene, too. <laughs> uh, Ichi, we see him, he's, he's like on his bicycle in the middle of the night, and we see four other boys like in the alleyway, and three of the boys are picking on one, like bull- bullying him, and that yeah. his name is Takeshi. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's the son of Kaneko, who we mentioned earlier, and we'll be mentioning again shortly. They're picking on him because his dad's a failure of a cop. Because Kaneko, who's now Kakira's henchman because he can't get another job, because he's, <laughs> co- he's a cop who lost his gun. God. And so, yeah, he gets made fun of all the time. And you imagine joining the Yakuza because you can't find steady work anywhere else. <laughs> Fuck, man. Ichi uh, kicks the shit out of that kid, though. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, Kaneko's kid is, like, immediately enthralled by Ichi and is like, oh, like, he used martial arts to beat up my bully. Surprised he didn't slice the bully. Dude, I know. I was, I, 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 when, that, when I saw that and he was kind of, like, being, being awkward and I saw the kid, I was like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. I can do the... Killing the guy who's raping a girl, I can do that. Just fuck that guy. Yeah. But this, who? I, I was like, please don't go there. And they, they didn't. He kicks the shit out of him, though. They didn't hear. But we'll get there. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> Jesus, man. Oof. <clears throat> Gigi incites Itchy to enter an apartment containing several criminals to the old Anyo gang and slaughter them all. <laughs> Crazy scene. We see him run into a room and then just <laughs> fuck blood, blood, up. blood spewing out of the room. That CGI is insane, but it also kind of works. It's weird because you'd think, you know, blades on the back of your on your heels would be a very ineffective weapon in battle. But nobody beats this guy. No, it's amazing. No, he can kick so goddamn high. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Good, good thing too. Yeah. You got to be a rocket to use those things. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Afterward. Ichi sees Takeshi, the little boy, Kaneko's son, who thanks him for their earlier protection. Kaneko finds a brothel keeper assaulting Ichi in an alley. Interesting scene here, because then we have the flashback of him, we get a little, like, character development on Kaneko. Yeah. Which isn't, like, totally necessary, but it adds. It adds to it. It's very quick, but it adds to it. Yeah. <clears throat> so, Kaneko, you know, he's... You know, re- remembering his long ago rescue by a member of the Anyo gang in a similar spot in an alleyway. So he decides to help Itchy out, not knowing who he is. <laughs> what a fuck up this well, guy because, is. Well, because Itchy is like this cowardly, yeah, like panicking guy on the ground. You'd never think he's the mastermind murdering killed, all the people. Who killed 20 people in like 10 seconds, yeah. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> Kakira enlists the help of corrupt twin police detectives. Great characters. Jiro and Sabaro. To find Miu Miu, a prostitute connected with Ryu Long, the other member of Gigi's cleaning crew. Were they like legit twins or one actor on a split screen? Oh, it's one actor. Really? Right. Yeah, Suzuki Matsuo. Fuck, way yeah. to go. That's I mean, incredible. You I couldn't tell. No, not at all. That's you, impressive. That was, they, they were hilarious. <laughs> they were great. Like, I, they were so off the wall. Yeah. I couldn't, yeah, I mean, obviously they were really dark and twisted, but. This whole movie is. You got to take this movie with a grain of salt. Like, you got to just, if you are just disgusted the whole time, you're not going to be entertained. You got to yeah. find the absurdity in this movie, or For you are sure. never going to sleep at night. For sure. <laughs> For sure. Oh, man. So, yeah, so, so Real Long is now the, is who, who we're looking for. And, you know, they can't get information. The two brothers can't get information out of, out of him, so. What he decides to do is uh, sniff the 
prostitute's body? You remember that scene? Yeah, what the fuck was that? That was really bizarre. Yes. And he's got the little ears on. That was just that was just one of those like really weird horror elements. Like, let's just put something weird in there. But he's immediately like, I know where he is. Yeah, he like s- smells her legs, her crotch area, and knows where this guy Long is. What? To get Long sent and tracks him down. Oof. And this, uh, another epic scene of when they see him and he opens the window and you see one of the brothers staring at him. And you're like, ah! You know, <laughs> and he just starts running and he falls through, a, falls through a floor and, you know, eventually gets captured, which sucks. I thought he was going to get away for a second. I was like, no way, is he going get to out, get out on foot? But then he runs into Kakira. Yep. Who is just never going to let him, yeah, you know. Nope. Never going to let him pass. Yeah, that's not happening. So, you know, they capture him. They're torturing him for leads. Uh, it, you know, he's w- one of the most loyal motherfuckers I've ever seen in a movie. Oh, hell yeah. He gets his hand bit bit off. <laughs> like, that that bit, you know, oh, we were talking man. about Kakira's mouth. Yeah. You know, we're, we're talking about, that. that is fucking scary. He punches Kakihara in the jaw, and <laughs> he punches off the piercings and gets his fist lodged in Kakihara's giant mouth. And he... Like basically tears off his flesh with his hand, like with his teeth, and it's, have you ever seen the Mummy Returns? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You remember when the the uh, the museum guy like stuck his arm in the Scorpion King chamber? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And pulled it back, and it was gone. Mm-hmm. Like ripped, like the flesh was eaten shit. off. That's exactly what happened. That's that shit. Look, did we already go past the scene where Kagehara tore that guy's face off? Yeah, actually, yes. We yeah, that's like they don't have that in this the Wikipedia one. That would be really like right where we are okay. right now. I gotta bring that up. That, yeah, I'm, I'm glad we did. Yeah. It's, it's right in between these two paragraphs. That so go for it. Is the most that, that that was the scene that disturbed me the most because it was so off the cuff. It was nothing. I don't even remember what the guy said. It was so. It wasn't even that big a deal. He just said like, "I don't think I can find that. I don't think I remember that guy's name or something like that." And Kagara just grabs his cheek and starts pulling aggressively at the guy's flesh has him down on the ground. He's ripping this guy's cheek off and the guy is screaming like, I'll remember the name. I'll remember it. And Karen comes over and starts tearing at his other cheek and says to Kagihara, like, I think we'd make a good team. We'd make a good couple. And this guy's just like, ah, like screaming as his face is being ripped open. What the fuck? Uh, Oh my God. Jesus. I couldn't. I was just like, fuck man. What is this? <laughs> Jesus. Gigi is in control of Karen. Yeah. And that's partly why she's doing this. Mm. And that leads us to her immediate turnaround. Uh, Gigi needs to turn. He needs Itchy to go to the, like, go there to become a full fledged killer. Yeah. And so what he's going to do Oof. is, uh, you know, to turn Itchy into a complete killer, Gigi has Karen, Anya's woman, and Gigi's friend, seduce Itchy by pretending to be the woman in his false memory. Oh, man. Woo! So, Ooh. so talking about the rape from when he was a boy. So, they're trying to convince Itchy that this is the girl that was raped and that she now is like, you know, sedu- you know, is trying to seduce him and is like turned on by it. Yeah. Um, messing with this guy. Again, you know, again, Itchy is like mentally disabled. Whenever, uh, earlier in the movie, there's a scene where um, uh, Gigi goes to his apartment. He's playing Street Fighter. Yeah. With like a blanket over his head and he just mm-hmm. killed 20 people. Yeah. You know, that's mm-hmm. what we're dealing with here. Yeah. Messed up. That's Ichi the killer. Yeah. But the fact that like Gigi's willing to manipulate Ichi even further like this. And manipulate Karen. Manipulate Karen like by making him think not only is she the girl from the rape, from the rape uh, dream but that she's grateful that it happened and she wishes he was there to rape her too. What the fuck? Oh man, man. Ugh. It's, I can't stand it sometimes, man. It's hard. To, it's hard sometimes to watch this movie, especially during that part. That part's really tough to get through. For sure. For sure. You know, and Itchy's confused, obviously. Mm, yeah, you could say that. And uh, Karen's claims that she desired for him to rape her, he, he retaliates and kills her. Yeah. He slices her neck as well. Yeah. Um, she says, you know, he says like, oh, I get it. You want me to kill you because you 
didn't want me to kill you. His logic yeah. is so hard to follow. Yeah, you want me to kill you because you don't want me to kill you. You yeah. want me to hurt you because you don't, yeah. So he takes her- You want me to rape you yeah. because you don't want me to rape you. Mm-hmm. He cuts her, th- her leg off first. Miss Takibana. Yeah. And she starts hopping on one leg. Yeah. Brutal. Jesus. Brutal. Yeah. Takashi likes to cut things off. Yes. <laughs> Very much. That's a Limbs, favorite of his. heads, tongues. tongues. <laughs> you name it, man. Faces. And um, yeah, she's just hopping away and he follows her. Gets her. Gets her in the throat. Yep. Just like most of his victims. There yeah. goes Karen. Karen gone. That was a, that was a brutal scene. Um, had a tough time. I really liked Karen. I really liked that character. She got completely mind-fucked by Gigi. Yes. Speaking of Gigi, he is very near Kakira and his boys. In fact, at the same apartment complex. Mm-hmm. And he calls Kakira and says, Itchy's on his way. Um, he's coming to kill him. Come to kill you. But then Gigi is spotted by, um, what's his name? The one who always sits out. Um, what's his name? Uh, Takiyama. Takiyama. Takiyama sees him because he steps out of, because he doesn't like to see torture or anything like that. So he's outside of the apartment. <laughs> he's in the wrong gang. And he sees Gigi on the phone, like ducking. And he's like, that fucker. You know? <laughs> and starts chasing him. You know? Yeah. And, <laughs> and, and, and holds him at gunpoint. I thought Gigi was gonna get shot. Mm-hmm. What was going on in your head at that point? Like, oh my god! Like, <laughs> honestly, I thought Ichi was gonna like dive from the top and just like razor cut this guy. Just bah, bah, bah. But what did happen was <laughs> pretty, pretty interesting. <laughs> yeah, Jesus. Um, Gigi, Gigi's uh, he's wearing like a really thick coat and really really baggy pants, like the whole movie. Yep. And then in this scene, he takes those clothes off and just has like a, you know, small pair of underwear on and he is absolutely ripped. <laughs> yeah. He like, can beat the shit out of 70s Arnold Schwarzenegger. No, that's this, I was about to say yeah. he looks like his body looks like old school Schwarzenegger. Yeah. Like just chiseled. It's a it's free. Do you think that was like really him? I have no idea. <laughs> Cuz that was impressive. That was unbelievable. Yeah. And, I, and I was like and then he rushes the guy and like crushes him. Like he like grabs a skull and yeah. you're like, Man, this guy's got so much force. It's like the fucking Hulk. <laughs> it really is. It really is crazy. Why does and he even need Itchy? I don't know. And he, you know, he breaks his body. It says here on Wikipedia, he grotesquely breaks his body. <laughs> and then throws him at Kagihara's door. Like, here's your trash. <laughs> oh, shit. I don't think it's outside the, you know, I, I I don't think it's crazy to say Kakihara is a little, little scared. Oh right yeah, now. and he's saying he's saying that. Yeah. I love it. He's like, man, I'm freaking out right now. <laughs> and he's kind of smiling, and he's like, they're like looking, they're like itchy's itchy's coming. Yeah, he's like, I've never felt this before. Itchy's coming, man. Yeah, like this is this is happening. Mm. And it does. <laughs> it fucking does. Itchy come and he's chasing them. He's chasing them amongst this this really strange, which I love how they chose to shoot, shoot it there. That location's awesome. That weird apartment complex. Yeah, or feels like a maze, and. We see them, which I didn't know what time of day it was until they go to the rooftop. Like, oh my God, it looks like it's 10 in the morning, which gives such a strange vibe to the whole movie because you feel like they're the only people in Japan the whole time. Yeah. You're like, these guys, this is it. This is, this is Japan. This is what's important, what's going on right now. And it, it, needless to say, when it gets, goes slow-mo and Ichi's chasing him, epic. <laughs> Fucking epic. I don't even care if you don't like the grotesqueness of this movie, if you think it's too much or you know, a little too violent. That's fine. But this, this scene is so rewarding. When you're watching, uh, Kakiyar is looking back at him smiling and he's like, come on, like chase me, motherfucker. You know, <laughs> he feeds off. He wants it so bad. Where's your mind at at this point? At this point, I'm just like, get him. Yeah. Get that motherfucker. That guy's done so much dark shit. Let's, he needs to pay. Yeah, I, I, want, I, I wanted the fight. Yeah. I wanted the straight up one on one, like, let's duke it out. Without a doubt. Bah, 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 bah. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know, we wanted the 13 Assassins shit. <laughs> you know? Yeah, man. Oh, my God. Oh, incredible stuff. So, yeah, so it's not just Ichi and Kokira that are. This, this changes the entire film. Kaneko is also chasing. I think he's obviously trying to prove himself. Yeah. He's got a lot to prove. He's, and Kakira yeah. says multiple times, don't get my way. Don't, yeah. get, don't fucking get in my way. And what does he do? Gets in his way. He gets way in his way. Like, way in his way. 
Uh, due to Gigi's psychological manipulation, Itchy believes that Kaneko is his brother and confronts him. Why did he do that? What? Like, why did Gigi I don't know. implant that in Ichi? Wouldn't that get in his way? Yeah. He, he, he was overlapping himself. Yeah. Like, he didn't think everything through. Maybe he just wanted to ensure that, because this was the end for Gigi, right? This was his goal. Take yeah. these guys down. So, I, maybe by convincing Ichi that Kaneko's his brother, if he kills Kaneko, he's broken emotionally for good. He ensures Ichi is no longer a threat. Like, disables him. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. That's what I think. Yeah, that's, no, that's a good point. I like that. Mm-hmm. I, I'm definitely, that's one of the reasons I want to watch it again. I, I'm like, I want to see the scene again. Yeah. Kaneko shoots the side of Ichi's leg. Yeah. Bam, bam. Causing Ichi to sit, you know, slit Kaneko's throat in front of Takeshi, his kid. Mm. Brutality. Yeah. Brutality. Um, And again, you know, it, it kept getting scarier the more and more necks that got sliced it felt like more blood is spewing out each time it's just like oh well and Ichi's reaction to this is he's you know devastated he falls on the ground starts sobbing and Kagehara's like dude get up we're fighting yeah and he's like ah oh, you ruined it Kaneko damn it <laughs> he's like, like trying to grab him come on come on you're good you're good yeah like he's holding his he's holding his his fucking needles you know and he's like poking at him come on come on don't let me down <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Oh man. <laughs> My God. And now uh, you know it gets gets a little gray here. Takeshi yeah. attacks Ichi as he lies on the roof, begging for forgiveness. Kakira realizes Ichi cannot hurt him and inserts skewers into his ears to drown out Ichi's cries. Ooh, ah, ears. That that also is like awesome filmmaking when they go into his head. Ooh. And I love the way the sound just stops. Yeah. That's that's what would happen. Mm-hmm. It wouldn't be gradual. It'd just be boom. You can't hear anymore. Oh, man. God damn. <laughs> Suddenly, he sees that Ichi has chopped off Takeshi's head. <sighs> He's back. Ichi charges him, embedding one of his razor blade boots in the center of his head, right down the middle. Kakira falls from the rooftop to his death after doing a Donkey Kong. Uh, you know, <laughs> he's, he, was, he was hanging there for a minute. <laughs> and he falls off the roof. About 20 stories and dies. Yeah. However, I- when Gigi finds him, Kakira has no wound in his head. He he hallucinated both Takeshi's murder and Ichi's attack as he jumped to his death while Ichi cried. Years later, Gigi's corpse hangs from a tree in a park. A young man resembling an older Takeshi leaves the park with a group of school children. And the credits start rolling. And I immediately grabbed my phone. I was like, Connor... <laughs> Holy shit, man. So if that's a hallucination, w- so Kakihara, he did die? Yeah, he killed him. He jumped off, yeah. He killed himself. He committed suicide, yeah. Fuck. By jumping off, yeah. Damn. No. Uh-uh. No, uh-uh. He doesn't get to go out that easily. That oh, motherfucker no. Oh, no. should have suffered. Fucking weak ass. He should have been yeah. chopped to pieces. That, oh, uh. he, he bailed himself out. Yeah. Fuck. That's part of the movie. You know, it's like such a big part of it. Like, that ending of Kaneko getting in the way and us not really getting the one-on-one. But it's really not about the one-on-one. It's about Gigi manipulating everybody in the movie, including Kakihiro without knowing it. So did Gigi kill himself? Now that his, like, his yeah, job is done? this is it. Yeah, my, my yeah. work is literally done. Yeah. Fuck. So yeah, he's I wonder why me. he was so motivated. Don't know. Like, why did he... I mean, there, there, is, a, there is a prequel. Yeah, that's, that's true. That, that, that is focused on yeah. Ichi as a younger We're boy. We're gonna have to check that out. Yeah, yeah, I'm curious. I'm really curious to see like what route it goes. Is it just probably like, was it just trying to fulfill like the gore fest that everybody loved about it, and they were like, let's just get more Ichi, like more Ichi kills, or was it like a really well thought out? I- I'm curious, I'm really curious. Me too. I thought I, I don't know how I'm going to be able to watch this without Kakihara. <laughs> I know, right? He's the face of the movie. It, I thought he was Ichi so, the killer. So, so yeah, we'll talk about that now. Yeah. You know, um, yeah, the, the credits start rolling, and, and yeah, I was just like, dude, that was that was epic. That was epic. I told my girlfriend, I was like, I know that probably like, cause she saw some scenes and she was like, this is weird. <laughs> and yeah, but she was like, it's really cool. That you like found something, you know, like mm-hmm. you found something new. She knows how important that is to me uh, with movies and how excited I get when I see something new and how much more excited I get when I see something that's old, but new for me. <laughs> it's one thing to go to the theater. It's new for everybody. 
it's fresh for everybody. But when you find something that's old, that's like a gem and it's like becomes yours. Oh yeah. So much pride in that. And yeah, I, I, I love this movie. Love <laughs> it. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going to own this movie. That's for sure. Uh, Mike, Takashi Mike. Job well done. I'm, I'm going to try and watch as many of your movies as I can. Cause that's, that's what this did to me. Props, man. That's, this that's is great. like what I think, I think for like a lot of people, like what Parasite did. It's like, man, I think I'm going to check out more of his or check out more Korean stuff. Cause that was, that was pretty cool. Yeah. That's how I feel about this. Everyone like, needs a gateway movie. Mm-hmm. And that's, I'll be the first to admit that. I just haven't seen enough foreign stuff. Yeah. Straight up. And this is part of the, the podcast. We're over a year in now. This is the kind of stuff we're going to start doing more of is a little bit more off the wall and challenging ourselves and watching new things because when we talk about The Shining, of course, it's great. <laughs> We've seen that a hundred times. This, this is way different. We're going to do both, you know? We're going to do the classics. We're going to do the weird yeah. reputation, you know, cult classics. And in a way, the way we're going to start doing it is we're not leaving it up to us. And we'll get more into that next exactly. week. Exactly. So exactly. not even we're going to know what we're doing. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Judy, Judy is the last planned episode. That's all we'll say. Yeah. <laughs> From there on in, it's going to be off the wall. It's yeah, it's going to be mayhem, yeah. Yeah. new new format and everything. It's going to be cool. Super excited. Yeah, yeah. but uh, and that'll be next week with Judy Garland. Um, I give this film an eight. Yeah, I thought it was good. What? What? So I know you like this one better than Audition. Why is it not a nine? If you like, if you definitely like it better, or does it just take a second viewing? It might take a second viewing for yeah. me. Honestly, it's like, who am I if I give like if I give this a nine? I'm well, like, I give it a ten. So. I know that's what I'm like. Fuck. This movie is so fucking twisted that I'm like, I need to give it, I need to watch it with this mindset of like, all right, so this is what I'm in for. So let's watch it this way. Mm-hmm. Before I, it might go up, it might stay in eight. I won't know. Yeah. I don't know. Give it a, a year or so before yeah, I check yeah. this out again. Good. Yeah, yeah, And uh, we'll see. But right like now, that. good movie. But <laughs> off, like, unlike. Pretty twisted. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. This it's going to stick with me for a very long time. <laughs> he just pulled that guy's face off. I can't move on from that. That is he cut his own tongue. God. He has Damn. he has gills in his face. <laughs> Essentially, what the fuck? Uh, Incredible character. And, and, and yeah, he's on the DVD case. Kaki Reyes, and it says Ichi the Killer and you're like, "So is that the guy?" Yeah, I assumed no, for a very long no, no, time no. that that was Ichi the Killer, but no. <laughs> Something so simple. Like that, like changing your DVD case to a guy that's not itchy yeah. is genius. That's the kind of stuff that the best filmmakers do is they do those little things to get you kind of just build that anticipation, you know? Very true. And yeah, I, Takashi, yeah, I can't say enough. I, I'm in love with this film. I give it a 10. Yeah, I, I, I realize I, I don't, I don't think I care too much anymore about um, admitting what I like, I guess. I get that. Um, I mean, you know, one of my favorite movies of all time is like top fives of Mulholland Drive. So, movie makes no goddamn sense, and it has a lot of just strange shit in it. Not like that, obviously nowhere near this, but my point is, I I like maybe even to a fault. I like stuff that's like deliberately weird and different. Yeah, probably because we've seen so much. See, I I, I like that you tend to approach film from like a stylistic standpoint. I tend to go straight for the narrative. Yeah, you're you're well you're a right you're a writer writer and yeah. you stories so much for you. Yeah. Agree same for me, but yeah, I yeah, I very much the first thing I look at is how's the camera moving? And the acting. Holy shit, the performances are yeah, awesome. The performances in this are pretty fucking crazy. And and, and yeah, and, the, and yeah, we we could talk about Kakira all day. Um there's a there's a podcast I listen to called uh it's it's I think it's just called Movie Villains. And they just talk about, you know, like Joker. And they even, uh, the guy who hosted, uh, he wanted to do like kind of like, you know, a little bit deeper stuff, underground stuff. And he did Amy Dunn from Gone Girl huh. as one of his favorite villains of the, of the decade. This is one of my favorite villains of all time. And of course, everybody in the movie is a villain, but, but Kakira is still the show. Oh, he's on a completely different level. He steals the show. He's, the way he dresses, the, the smoking, the, how small he is. Why does nobody just beat this guy up? He's tiny. Because he's fucking evil. He's evil and he loves pain. He yes. can't beat this guy. Bring up. it on. Yeah. 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 Oof. Yeah. He's, yeah. You know, like, yeah, I, I'll bring Joker back up because he's Joker times a billion. Not kidding. Watch the movie. 
if you think Joker is scary at all, if you think if you think Joaquin Phoenix is frightening at all, <laughs> watch this. This is a character that will like tear you to pieces because he's so evil. Fuck yeah, yeah man, it's oh, crazy. Boy, I totally get why Tarantino loves this guy. Yeah, of course, totally get it. <laughs> um, yeah, I've heard I've heard a lot of current guys praise him, Eggers and Ari Aster, and he's the man. Yeah, he's, he's influenced some greats, mm-hmm. and he's still in it. He's you know a hundred movies. Yeah, and he's counting. fucking cool. Yeah, he's not just some weirdo. Like he's cool. He created a really cool environment for the set of this movie, and everybody left it like that was a great experience. I can't fucking believe when that. they're filming this horrendous stuff. Yeah, <laughs> that shows true control of your of your movie. That's also due to him not going through Hollywood, due to him saying fuck you, fuck you to the suits. I'm doing, I'm doing this my way. Yeah, this man. is this is the Mike way. Yeah, <laughs> it's awesome. It's refreshing. Oh, yeah. Well, I think that about wraps it up for us on Ichi the Killer. Uh, hell of a movie. Hell of an episode. I'm glad we were finally able to unpack this motherfucker. Yeah. And uh, Oh, well, a week ago, I had no idea what we were, what we were getting into. <laughs> Me neither, man. And a couple nights ago, I was like, oh, all right. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I had audition scheduled here. I don't. I just, I had like this whim. I was like, I want to finally do that movie. We've had that one planned for months. Yeah. Months. We've known that we were going to do this for months. Mm-hmm. And Ichi just, se- you know, it seemed like the logical bonus yeah at the time no, yeah. it's just our, you know, i kind of just went along with it because i didn't really know i was like yeah that sounds great to do it i would love to do a japanese film yeah i was in the dark and you were like yeah trust me it's like on every list you know like audition is and i was like yeah yeah no i yeah i'm in i'm in let's do it i'll do i'll do anything we did fucking maximum overdrive <laughs> i'll do anything <laughs> we will go to the very bottom and to the tippy top yes there's no well there's a couple off limits but we won't go there do we have anything from caleb and josh for this uh, no, we don't. Damn. But I'm sure they would have a lot to say. Yeah, because yeah, because Josh said, you know, it's something else, and I, I, I really would love to hear hear their thoughts. Um, maybe I'll text him tonight, and we can. Yeah, maybe we can just kind of share our thoughts about it. Yeah, yeah, crazy it, movie for sure, man. <laughs> and uh, next week we're going very tame with a career retrospective well, on well, Judy well, like, Garland. Her life is pretty fucked. Like, her life is fucked, but but, it's, but yeah, it's not itchy the killer. Thoughts. The movies are. Awesome and like yeah. tame and fun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. By the way, I just I watched Judgment at Nuremberg. Awesome. Yeah, man. Awesome. So um, all I have left is Meet Me in St. Louis, which I'll maybe do tonight or tomorrow. Yeah. I don't know yet. We're only doing four uh, four movies and the 2019 Judy biopic because we learned our lesson with John Wayne. Less is more. Yeah. And Judy Garland, a lot of her movies bled together. A lot of them were the same. You know, happy go lucky, dancing around. Mm-hmm. So we picked four that we think best represent her career. And those four, might as well say them, The Wizard of Oz, Meet Me in St. Louis, A Star is Born, and Judgment at Nuremberg. And we will talk about all of those, plus her life. I've enjoyed all of them so far. I have, yeah. And I have not seen Meet Me in St. Louis yet, but I really like, I mean, of course, Wizard of Oz, that was a revisit. But I hadn't seen Judgment or um, Star is Born. Awesome. Oh, yeah. She was on a a whole, like a, a great level. And she never really got her due as a as a performer, and no. she was just used her entire life. And I'd like to shine a spotlight on her. And it's going to be a sad episode, so buckle up. But uh, yeah, can't wait for that. So yeah, that'll be next very week exciting. For you. And uh, until then, well, you know, maybe don't get involved in, with the yakuza, and if you do, you know, stay away from people who I'm sure there's no way in hell. Gangsters weren't influenced by this one. You know that some asshole oh, cut his face open. Oh man, yeah. So stay away from those motherfuckers. Yeah. And we'll see you next Wednesday. Peace. Mm